In order to access the limit switches on a conventional actuator, we need to remove the cover. You may have a solid cover or a cover with a sight glass and a dial indicator beneath. They both remove exactly the same way by loosening the four captured fasteners. And again, fasteners are captured. And if you do have a dial indicator, you just want to put your fingers behind the indicator and just pull it straight off. And this will give us access to our limit switch adjustment screws. You may have two adjustment screws like I have in this particular actuator, or you may have a four gear train with two more adjustments. It's divided into two portions, the counterclockwise or open, or the clockwise or close. They can be set in any order as long as the valve is in the position we're going to set those limit switches at. Place my actuator and valve in a closed position. And so I'm going to set my closed limit switch on the black side. I'm going to push in, which is our detent. I'm going to turn in the direction of the arrow, which is clockwise for close. And for every one turn of my screwdriver, my pointer will rotate 90 degrees. And I'm going to bring that pointer around until it points towards the trip mark and immediately stop turning. If I should inadvertently go one click too far, I'm going to take my pointer a full 360 degrees around. With my pointer pointing towards my trip mark, I'm going to put my actuator in manual. I'm going to turn my hand wheel counterclockwise. My pointer will come off. I'll turn my hand wheel clockwise. My pointer should come back on. The same thing should occur with my motor. When I run my motor open, my pointer will come off. When I run my motor closed, my pointer will point in the direction of the trip mark and stop my actuator. Now with my actuator in the open position, I'm going to go over to my open side. I'm going to push in on my setting screw, which is my detent. I'm going to turn it counterclockwise for open. Also, there'll be an arrow showing the direction. And for every turn of the screw, my pointer will rotate 90 degrees until it comes around and points towards the trip mark. When I turn my actuator hand wheel clockwise, my pointer will come off. And if I turn it back counterclockwise, my pointer will come on. Just like with the motor, if I run the motor closed, my pointer will come off. If I run my motor open, my pointer will come on to the trip mark. My limit switch settings are complete. So the conventional control unit has test knobs, both on the closed and the open side. Turning the test knob in the direction of the arrow for limit switches will, of course, trip your limit switches. Turning it in the opposite direction will trip your torque switch, which will cause a fault in this case on my actuator here, so I'm going to clear that fault. So I can run my actuator, and I can use my limit switch to stop my actuator. And that works both in the open and closing directions. So to put our actuator back together with the cover on it, I'm going to take my dial indicator and push my dial indicator all the way on, so as far as I can push it in. And then my dial is adjustable. I can change the angle that the dial is set at. So I'm going to put my open at my arrow on the bottom of my cover. My valve is in the open position right now. I'm going to run my actuator close. And now I'm just going to hold the front dial and I'm going to move the back dial. So my closed indication points towards the arrow on the bottom of the cover. I'm going to reinstall my cover. I'm going to make sure that the O-ring is in place and in good condition. And I'm going to tighten up my fasteners crosswise. and your settings are complete.